enough to kill the entire population of California twice. It was amazing because she was a, a woman in a time where, again, women didn't have as many rights as they have now, but she was willing to go. It helped me a lot when I was a freshman in my English classes, just going there and asking them like what they thought of my essays, and they gave a lot of good tips, and they were really nice and helpful. You are put on a team, and it's a relationship with people as you go through training, as you live life together. From the campus of California Baptist University in Riverside, California, with Marquise Brown and Elmer Mejia Sagasume, this is CBU TV. Hello and welcome to CBU TV's 2022 November News Program. In our top story, according to the United States Drug Enforcement Administration, fentanyl has become the deadliest drug threat America has ever faced. The County of Riverside held a press conference for the public to address how they will combat this crisis. Reporter Elmer Mejia Segasume was at the scene. Fentanyl deaths continue to rise at an alarming rate, affecting families from every race and ethnicity. The County of Riverside is addressing this epidemic and offering solutions from all fronts with their Faces of Fentanyl campaign. There is a drug killing thousands of people in our communities. It can be hidden in all drugs. Meth, heroin, pills. The tiniest amount of it could kill you. It's a substance called fentanyl. On the 20th of October, the County of Riverside held a press conference where several Riverside officials talked about the dangers fentanyl poses to the community. In Riverside County so far this year, there have been 338 deaths confirmed as a result of fentanyl, and we know that that number will significantly increase as toxicology results continue to come in. We will far exceed last year's fentanyl death total of 407 people. This is an epidemic that demands our attention. Riverside County Sheriff Chad Bianco assured Riverside County that police are doing everything in their power to combat this epidemic by dedicating officers, staff, and entire units to the fight. The sheriff put into perspective how much fentanyl is found in the community. Our agency alone has also seized 3,771,963 fentanyl pills and 398 pounds of fentanyl powder just since January 1st of this year. If you don't already know, let me tell you, that amount of fentanyl is enough to kill nearly 94 million people. Or to put it into a better perspective, enough to kill the entire population of California twice. Riverside Police submitted 19 fentanyl-related homicides to the Riverside District Attorney's Office and four cases to the Assistant United States Attorney's Office. While fentanyl is still illegal to possess, fentanyl is still illegal to sell, provide, furnish. So uh, each individual case is different. It could result in anywhere from a citation to being booked into jail uh, and being held in jail. You can, from the release from there, you could bail out, you can wait for a judge to release you, or depending on the severity of the circumstances, you may be there uh, pending trial. Another important aspect touched upon was the effectiveness of Narcan, a brand that exists to administer naloxone a powerful emergency narcotic overdose medication that can be injected via syringe or nasal spray. Dr. Jeffrey Lung spoke more about it. Naloxone or Narcan is a potentially life-saving medication that can be used just after an overdose. And it should be made readily available in any place where we think there are people at risk. But how easy is it to acquire Narcan? According to endoverdose.net, it is as simple as taking an online certification course running you through the symptoms of an overdose and teaching you how to effectively treat an overdose in very easy to remember steps. Once you pass the online course and receive certification, ordering Narcan is free of charge, just cover the cost of shipping. It is important to note that according to DEA.gov, a lethal overdose of fentanyl can occur on just three milligrams. That's smaller than a US penny. Narcan can combat and negate the effects of fentanyl or any other opiate drug overdose. However, it is only effective for about 30 to 90 minutes, depending on the situation. Even if you administer Narcan or other naloxone products, seek emergency help and call 911 immediately. If you want more information, please visit facesoffentanyl.net. Don't become another victim. For CBTV, I am Elmer Mejia Salastume. In other news, the season of giving is nearly upon us. The Southern Baptist Convention is preparing for the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, where people can give to help missions and missionaries spread the gospel to the nations. Reporter Wyatt McElmurray found out more. 
The Southern Baptist Convention are preparing for the Lottie Moon offering where people can give to missions across the globe. I was able to talk to Victor Chizorizabon about the purpose of the Lottie Moon offering. Who was like Lottie Moon? Like what was her like background? Yeah, so Lottie Moon was a uh, Caucasian lady you know, who came from America, who was a, again, amazing missionary to China. And uh, it was amazing because she was a, a woman in a time where, again, women didn't have as many rights as they have now, but she was willing to go and uh, because she uh, had a heart for um, some of my ancestors, the Chinese people. And uh, at 33 years old, uh, she went there and served there for 39 years. And really, uh, she um, gave her life uh, trying to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Chinese people. The point uh, we do it around Christmas because uh, history tells us that on Christmas Eve, she, uh, she passed away uh, as oh. um, she was returning to America. What specifically? Uh, does the money go to for like the missionaries? I mean, it goes to support all the different work that they do, whether it's housing, whether it's cost of living, whether it's the different sort of uh, uh, the budget that they need in order to basically do their mission work, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, these guys know how to um, squeeze every bit out of the money that they receive, you know? Mm -hmm. You have to be good at that on the mission field. Uh, so it goes to that, those sorts of expenses, basically the expenses of doing missions. To speak more into that, what is like the significance of like donating to the Lottie Moon offering? Oh, it's, it's one of the best things that you can do. It's a way that even if you have a penny, right, your penny is being divvied up to like thousands of missionaries, man, you know, and, yeah. and just a penny. Like people say, well, why would I give a penny? Well, a penny could go a long way. You, you never know. You yeah. Know? Um, you know, just some statistics real quick. 2021, 3,650 missionaries supported, 93 new people groups and places engaged, 107,701 baptisms, 22,744 new churches planted, 176,795 new believers, and almost 600,000 people hearing the gospel, right? To donate to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, you can always go to your local church or you can donate to the website online. The International Mission Board is always looking for more donations so they can reach as many different people groups as they can. Each donation is one step closer to fulfilling the Great Commission. Who knows? Maybe your donation could be the reason somebody is saved. For CBU TV, I'm Wyatt McElmurray. Thank you, Wyatt. The offering starts on December 4th through the 11th. You can donate by scanning the QR code on your screen. We turn the spotlight over to the Office of Student Success, designed to help students with their academics across multiple majors. Reporter Brett Rosen spoke to the director, Michael Osadchuk, about the specific benefits and tools of the Tutoring and Writing Center. Hey Lancers, have you ever struggled in a subject such as math or writing? Well then the Writing and Tutoring Center might be the perfect place for you, held here at the Student Success Offices over here in Lancer Arms. Today I had the pleasure of speaking with the Director of the Tutoring Center as well as a writing tutor about what they have here to help students out academically. Let's see what they had to say. We've been, I think, nimble in the last decade trying to meet students where they are and to meet their needs. So. Um, our primary services uh, in the tutoring center is, is tutoring, right? Um, and that really happens in, in three modalities. We have one-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring, which can be in-person or virtual. Um, so we're, we're doing both uh, modalities there. We have walk-in tutoring, uh, so students can come into our center. Mr. Osadchuk started at CBU 11 years ago when there was only the tutoring center. Since then, it has grown into the Office of Student Success by adding the writing center, both the Disabilities and Veterans Service Center, and most recently, the First Generation Service Center. He explained the differences between using the Writing and Tutoring Center versus going to a professor's office hours. It's very valuable to have a peer sort of walk you through the process, uh, whether that is concepts, understanding like a math concept, um, a philosophy concept, right? Uh, a concept in psychology, uh, whether it's something like that. And it's like, oh, this is how I understood what you know, Dr. Smith was, was, was saying. Um, 
That, that's always sort of a nice way for, for students to connect with peers. I asked a student tutor in the Writing Center about whether students who are not struggling in a subject like writing can benefit from the tools they provide. Even if it's something as, as small as organizing or planning, um, we, have, uh, we have services for that. I spoke with a student on campus about how the Writing and Tutoring Center benefited her. It helped me a lot when I was a freshman in my English classes, just going there and asking them like what they thought of my essays and they gave a lot of good tips and they were really nice and helpful. Some of the tools that benefit students are the free Grammarly premium subscription and a new program working with the Business Center to help with peer financial coaching. Students can set up an appointment on the center's website. Well, Lancers, as you can hear, there's a lot of tools that you as a CBU student can take advantage of here at the Writing and Tutoring Center. For CBU TV, I am Brett Rosen. Thank you, Brett. The Office of Student Success is located in Lancer Arms and is open Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Fridays. CBU is proud to introduce a new segment called Life After, which profiles CBU alumni on their journey after graduation. Reported via Hagen interviewed Carrie and Kevin Sheckler and discovered their unusual CBU ceremony and continued involvement with ISP and overseas work. Welcome to Life After, a CBU TV segment dedicated to our alumni, showing you the possibilities of your future career field so you don't have to stress out about it as much. My name is Via and joining us over the oh so familiar Zoom from England themselves, please welcome the Shecklers. So Carrie and Kevin Sheckler have been working overseas for about 10 years now. Um, that is absolutely crazy. I know you've worked in Illinois, Ethiopia, and now in England. How did you get involved with overseas work? I was a transfer student and I was a theater major and when I first arrived on campus I found out that there was a drama team that was going to be going to Australia. And I thought, what in the world? What is this all about? And to me, that's when God just began to knit within my heart that he takes who you are, your skills, your talents, your giftings, and you can use it for him. I'm from Michigan originally and came to California through the Marine Corps. My heart was stirred when I was in the service being mentored to be a, a, a disciple uh, of Jesus. You know, working at Cal Baptist, being on staff there. I was asked to, to lead and co-lead some teams overseas. And that really is, is how all the theory and all the abstract ideas about serving overseas really became very concrete. And then that's when we, we met is mm -hmm. leading a team to, to Germany in 2003, long time ago. Uh, ISP was just so instrumental for us, gave us great opportunities interacting interacting with the students. It's just a fantastic program. Not only do you still have ties to CBU through ISP, like you were saying, um, but you have another generation coming here. Uh, your eldest is a current freshman also attending CBU. Um, and what other ways has CBU stayed in your life since graduating? Goodness, that's been a part of our lives yeah. since, yeah, ever since. But even when we moved to Illinois and moved overseas, we were recipients of ISP teams. Um, for a while there, um, we had CBU teams come to Illinois and help mm. us with our vacation Bible school. And then we've been here in England for almost eight years and we've had teams come every year except for COVID obviously. And so we've always stayed connected again through the ISP program. I did hear that you guys got married on campus. That is, that's crazy. <laughs> How do you guys go about that? Were you sneaking in a pastor and like having a ceremony at Wanda's or something? That would have been a good idea. I would have, I would have preferred that actually. You know, back yeah. in the day, it wasn't, uh, it was still okay to do. But for us, we were th very thankful because again, CBU wasn't more than just a place to go to school. It wasn't just a place to work. It was a place to live life have friendships, relationships. And so what better place to get married than a place where our friends and family could come. And so the Smith Courtyard, yeah. you know, right by the Staples room, right in there, um, we were able to set it up. And um, yeah, that was just in October. So just recently, we celebrated 19 years ago that we had um, had our our wedding there. Congratulations on your anniversary. Before we wrap up, what advice would you have for students looking to do overseas work currently or as their career life after? While being a student, definitely check out the ISP program. Um, and 
you know, get involved if you can, serve in some capacity to go overseas. It's just a fantastic opportunity. One of the things that we have this gift, this wonderful privilege of doing is to be able to share the gospel with people uh, of all nations. If their lives have been changed, uh, then they can come and they can share that gospel through word, through deed, and make a significant impact. And so we, we would encourage them to check out the ISP program. Because ISP is more than just those two, three weeks or yeah. those two months. You are put on a team and it's a relationship with people as you go through training, as you live life together. I say also just to check things out and we'll put a plug in, come to England. Yeah. <laughs> we can't help it because it's more than just uh, what you might think it is. And we're blessed that we live among the nations right here the places in the world where the Christians are most persecuted out of the top 10, nine of those countries live right here in England, in our community. And you have opportunity to share the gospel with people that you couldn't actually go to their country. So come on over to England. If you'd like more information about the ISP program, contact Spiritual Life here on campus at the Lancer Plaza offices or on the number on your screen. I'm Via Hagen for CBU TV, and this has been Sheckler's Life After. Thank you, Via, for producing our first ever Life After segment. Tune in for further CBU alumni epic adventures. Elmer and I are graduating this semester, and we are so proud to have been a part of CBU TV during our time here as undergrad students. I would like to personally thank my family, friends, and professors for supporting me throughout my college career. I also want to take the time to thank CBU TV and the advisors for guiding me through my academic journey. I will forever be thankful to be a part of this wonderful publication. Thank you for watching CBU TV's news program. Be sure to follow us on social media. Until next time, have a blessed day.